we begin the next session, session four, that we will combine three of the units relating to similar topics. Our session unit eight, Franciscan presence and dialogue, living with diversity in a pluralistic society, along with Franciscan peacemaking, unit nine, and unit 10, enculturation through a Franciscan perspective. Just to review, unit five and six was our previous units that we looked at. Francis's mission, Claire's mission, and the companions and disciples mission. The uh, unit six, we reviewed developing the Franciscan person, ongoing conversion to be Christ-like. We posed the questions, for these units at the end. The same question that was asked during the early movement by Francis is who are we? How are we to live? What are we to do? The questions posed for us today and at St. Bonaventure University and looking at the Allegheny Associates is who are we? Where are we going? And who are we taking with us? In session four that we are going to do today will be units eight, nine, and 10 on peace and justice is our common theme. In unit eight, Franciscan presence and dialogue, living with diversity in a pluralistic society. In this unit, we will be looking at two writings on Francis and Claire that inspire the social justice movement. Francis meets the Sultan and Claire and the Saracens. In unit Nine, Franciscan peacemaking in a culture of violence. We'll be looking at the writings of Francis and Claire that inspired the social justice movement. Francis and the Wolf of Gubbio will be the main story that we will be looking at. In unit 10, enculturation as a Franciscan perspective, We'll be looking at the beauty of the Franciscan tradition, Bonagente, Claire's witness of, and Claire's witness of justice. Francis living in a world of diversity. Here's another, as again, as a reminder, I use artwork from various sources within our Franciscan family. This is a picture of Mary Esther Stewart and Francis and the leper. As we know, this was a moment of conversion and Francis reaching out to the outcast of society at, of his time. And who are those that are the lepers of our society today? Here's a reaching out Bonagente, another piece of artwork from Mary Esther Stewart, the hands of Francis and Claire extending over Bonagente, the good people of Assisi in how their prayer life, their witness and their presence brought 
the people of Assisi together, but also formed an extended outreach of that Franciscan spirit. Claire and Francis, a gospel way of life. As we know, our Franciscan heritage is based in prayer and the way of the gospel. Again, this is artwork from Mary Esther Stewart, reaching out the hands of Francis and Claire, reaching out to the San Damiano cross uh, as a witness to the guidance that they prayed for daily that we too carry out today. And another symbol that we've continued to run as a running theme throughout all the presence is you are what you are in the eyes of God, nothing more, nothing less. And again, the, the sign, sign of conversion, the Tau cross embedded in this picture of the eyes of Francis, Claire, and God all on the same level, which again is unique to our charism as Franciscans, but that witness of being Christ-like and Francis's conversion and the stigmata that he received of being one with Christ. Francis meeting the Sultan. It's a true example of presence, dialogue, and witness within our Franciscan tradition. Francis went to meet the Sultan, not to convert the Sultan, but to dialogue with the Sultan in an attitude of presence and to learn from the Sultan as much as Francis was hoping. To this day, this symbol of the horn that was given to Francis by the Sultan is in the Basilica of St. Francis in one of the museum pieces there, is still symbolic of that unity of Francis and the Sultan, but presence of meeting Christians, meeting Muslims, peacemaking and enculturation. The blessing of Francis uh, is a story that has, for years, the tradition was that Francis wrote the blessing for his brother, Leo. However, recent uh, research indicates if you look at the symbol at the base of the cross within the parchment, it looks like today we can look at it as the head of the Sultan and the praises of God coming out, that the blessing was meant for the Sultan in that Francis was praying, Leo comes by and says, oh, what are you working on? Oh, how nice you wrote this for me. And in essence, um, Francis the Sultan was about to go into war as the Pope was sending another crusade that was even going to be bigger and cause more hardship to the Sultan and his people. And Francis was sending that blessing to the Sultan in unity, praying for him during this anticipated troubled time. Claire meeting the Saracens, Francis went out to meet the Sultan and Christians meeting Muslims. Claire was confined to Assisi and her interaction of prayer versus dialogue 
as Francis dialogue Claire prayed is again this is from the artist uh, Francis Falk a Franciscan missionary of Mary is the symbol of the the monstra that Claire was holding and the reflection of Christ in Claire behind that reflection and the symbol of that Christ reaching out. The um, Saracens were paid mercenaries by Frederick II to take over territory. And as they were storming the walls of San Damiano, Claire's sister came to her saying, you know, please help us. And Claire comes out of prayer holding the monstra. Now, just remember that the monsters we use today was not the monster that Claire used at the time. It was a much smaller piece. However, we use that symbolicness of the light shining of Christ's presence that as a miracle, the Saracens retreated once Claire came out in prayer holding up that monstra. So Claire's witness to justice was through prayer. And this is, uh, uh, was written, I will always defend you. At the time when Assisi was at war, Many Saracens were about to forcefully enter the cloister of San Damiano. Claire, getting up from her sickbed, prostrated herself on the ground and pleaded with the Lord's help and protection. A voice was heard speaking the words, which are the title of this painting. The Saracens soon withdrew. In this painting, the large figure of Christ seems to advance in order to confront the negative forces symbolized by the violet shapes around it. Claire's witness of justice and servanthood, charity and leadership, lived right relationships and the privilege of poverty. Claire was a woman ahead of her time, understanding that whole aspect of relationships and right relationships. It wasn't until Vatican II that called communities to look at privilege as a whole, that we are all sisters and brothers, eliminating the referral of mothers and sisters, uh, superiors and, and followers and even looking at the way many communities were, were physically built. For example, um, those that were of lesser status would eat on the outside of the dining room. And those that had more privilege would eat at the main table. So even that in itself, even the way people's positions in prayer that certain people would sit, say, in the front rows and those of lesser status would sit in the back rows. And now many Franciscan communities, it's more of a circular of welcoming. The rule of Claire, the privilege of poverty on her deathbed, again, this is a Mary Esther Stewart, Claire asked the Pope for that privilege of poverty that no matter what, that the sisters would remain self-sufficient. If there was one can of beans left on the shelf, that would be shared amongst them versus what the Pope wanted is for the sisters to come under the responsibility of the bishop within the area to always provide for them. At the same time, 
Claire, for example, in her writings and testimony that, for example, their gardens, that they would only produce what they needed, not in excess. Here's another uh, symbol within this piece of artwork, Claire as a new guide to women, peace and prayer. And in this is that symbol of peace, uh, the palm branch, uh, the bird in the windowsill is uh, her uh, prayer life and reaching out to others is Claire giving the bread to uh, visitors, even what little they had to share, they always shared. And in this slide, we extend the understanding of the painting that you just saw. Based on the frescoes painted by Mark Balma for the Basilica of St. Chiara, Santa Chiara, Assisi in Italy, the frescoes were inaugurated on October 3rd, 1994, in the closing of the 800th anniversary of the birth of St. Clair. The intense blue of the center panel evokes the fullness of peace, which Claire felt inwardly and outwardly. The branch Claire holds is a cross sprouted into a living olive branch, a symbol of peace. In the left panel, Claire is standing in the cloister gate, humbly receiving bread from a younger sister. This symbolizes Claire giving up her nobility and becoming a total servant of God. The right panel shows Claire, a woman dedicated to a life of prayer bowed before God. The little sparrow in the window reminds us that God watches over all. In the same panel, we see a portion of San Damiano cross in which Jesus spoke to Francis and told him to rebuild the church. As he rebuilt it with stones and ministry, Claire rebuilt it with her many prayers. And just as uh, we'll be talking about this later, in the interpretation, the direct interpretation for Francis was, Francis, go rebuild my house. Others interpret it to be church. And so this is again, the house of God, the people of God, the bona gente. What are the images for the wolf of Gubbio? Here is the, in the story of the wolf of Gubbio, in this slide shares the story of the wolf of Gubbio. Francis was staying in a town of Gubbio during the time when a fearsome wolf rabid with hunger was roaming the area, devouring the people and animals. The people were so frightened that they carried weapons with them whenever leaving the city proper, but their weapons were inadequate against the starving wolf. The saint hearing about this decided to go out and meet the wolf even though the people of Gubbio warned him against this. However, Francis, arming himself only with the sign of the cross, went to meet the wolf, which came running towards him with its watering mouth wide open. Francis made the sign of the cross towards the wolf, crying out, Brother Wolf, come to me. In the name of Christ, I order you not to hurt me or anyone else. At once, the terrifying jaws of the wolf closed. He stopped running, lowered his head, and lay at the saint's feet, and though he had become a lamb. The Pavarello spoke to the wolf. Brother Wolf, you are doing 
great harm here in Gubbio. You are committing terrible crimes for which you deserve to die. But I want to make peace between you and the townspeople. The wolf wagged his tail, shook his body in agreement. St. Francis then made a peace pact between the wolf and the people of Gubbio. The wolf agreeing neither to harm the people nor the animals of Gubbio, and the people agreeing to feed the wolf who are acting harmfully out of hunger. From that day on, the people and the wolf kept the pact which Francis had made. The wolf lived two more years, during which time he went from door to door receiving food from the people. He hurt no one and no one hurt him. And it is a striking fact that not even a single dog even barked at him. The wolf grew old and died. And the people were saddened because whenever he went through town, his peaceful kindness and patience reminded them of the virtues and holiness of St. Francis. And this is taken from the Little Flowers of St. Francis. So uh, these pictures were taken actually in Gubbio as we were on the highway on a pilgrimage. Um, so there's authenticity in some of these pictures. Uh, again, using the artwork of the artisans in Assisi, these next few pictures are going to symbolize that whole aspect and the relationship of Francis and the wolf. This is taken from a canvas bag, Perdona Strada alla Pace. Uh, if you want peace, ask for pardon. And notice the symbolism of Francis reaching out the palm of his hand to reach to the wolf and Francis bowing down to the wolf. Notice in the background, there's the people of Gubbio hiding behind the tree. And the story goes that there was an older lady who everyone was fearful, who said, I will go with Francis. And she was the only one and everyone else stayed back. In this symbol, this is uh, uh, another artisan in Assisi of um, parchment. And again, see in this symbol, Francis bows down, kneels down to the level of the wolf. So remember in this, one of the previous slides of the eyes, you are who you are in the eyes of God, nothing more, nothing less. And the eyes of Francis and God and Claire all in the same level. So again, it's living out that witness of being one with the other. And in this symbol, Francis and the poor is, is the poor is in Francis's hand. And again, that symbol of peacemaking. Uh, this is a piece of porcelain. Again, pay attention to some of the colors that we're using um, by the artisans. So this wolf is gray. Again, it's that symbol of the poor and the hand of Francis reaching out, but the respect for each other. Again, a gesture of peace. Francis and the wolf. So how the story is expressed. This is a piece of olive wood. And in this one, Francis is almost knighting the wolf. Uh, and, and out of respect. But again, notice that it is an open palm uh, out of respect. And this is taken from a, a, an artist, Nolan, <coughs> from a storybook. How do you identify with the story of the Wolf of Gubbio? So notice in this representation, Notice the eyes of the wolf. 
notice the color that is portrayed. And again, we know many times black is used for darkness or evil uh, as a symbol, but notice the eyes uh, and how Francis made peace. Again, Francis goes down to the level of the wolf versus standing up in a superiority position. And um, the wolf and the people lived in harmony. So when I was in Assisi on a pilgrimage, this is a uh, obviously a German shepherd, but to symbolize that whole aspect of Francis and the wolf living in unity, but with the people, the Bonagente, the good people of Gubbio and how, how peaceful that wolf is within the town. So what is our choices for the image of the wolf? Um, the question was asked, how varied are your works, Lord? In wisdom, you have wrote them all. The earth is full of your creation. It's taken from Psalm 10. But notice in this picture how Francis is one with nature. And uh, the question was asked by uh, uh, a person, and I asked Jean-Francois, the question is, was the wolf male or female? And we're gonna see this in representation in another. But notice how the wolf is one with nature, Francis is one with nature. In this picture of the wolf of Gubbio is again by Francis Fogg. Notice the colors that I used. Uh, notice the fury of the fire within the heart and notice the eyes. Again, it's kind of like that evil niche that Francis is calming the evil within. And uh, the um, shared from the artisan Francis Falk writes, nonviolence and the wolf within. The gentle spirit of Francis is expressed in the dramatic form of a story about the wolf of Gubbio. It can be seen as a parable which speaks of the human no longer at strive with nature, but establishing harmony with it. This painting is a search for the deeper meaning of the story and is about looking at the violence within ourselves. Mutual respect. This is Mary Esther Stewart. And again, as I was sharing about the different representations of the story of the Wolf of Gubbio, is that whole aspect of the paw and the hand. And in this representation by Mary Esther Stewart, the hand of Francis of Assisi and the paw of the wolf, one within the other, are symboled of two opposite fractions that can come together peacefully. According to the legend, the wolf agreed to stop ravaging the town of Gubbio and the people agreed to feed the wolf daily until its death. Mutual respect and willingness for compromise can lead to peace between individuals among local and national groups and among nations, even to a global level. So again, that whole symbol of the wolf within us and how we represent, but that compromise that can come out of that. Uh, what are the internal and external images of the wolf? So here are some sports symbols. Um, this is a hockey team in uh, Chicago and the whole idea of uh, their symbol of the wolf again and St. Bonaventure University again there's that symbol of the of the wolf looking furiously at uh, the opponent. Uh, so what is your image the wolf of Gubbio? So there's two images here of uh, the wolf one 
if you look at it, is very peaceful within nature. The other one looks like it's about looking after its prey for its next attack. So again, what is that symbol within nature, how we live, what we learn from nature, peacemaking within. So the question was raised by uh, someone is, so was the wolf or gubio male or female? And as Jean-Francois Gaudet Caligaris, who's written extensively on this, shares, oh, Paula, he would say, the wolf started out male, but ended up showing that whole aspect of female presence. So we know within us, we have male and female tendencies, um, patriarchal, matriarchal. And so what was shared is that there's two sides to us that we show. Um, it can be a defensive side or an offensive side, but that how we blend and compromise and use <coughs> that inner understanding with both. The wolf of Gubio today, here's a symbol. Obviously, this is a, a Alaskan dog war. On, but <laughs> what, are the, what are those things within nature or in society today that are pulling us apart and causing the violence? Um, so what is the violence without us? that cause to change that inner peace within us. And the future of the wolf of Gubio is our symbol of our bottlehead, our wolf number one, uh, again, will prevail. So the stories of the wolf, here's a shared by um, one evening on a Cherokee told his grandson, about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, settlement, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about this for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The Cherokee, the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. So again, this is something within us. It's like, do we, are we willing to let go and build harmony within ourselves and others? Or do we hold grudges? Beauty in the Franciscan tradition, Bonaventure was the beauty of the reduction of the arts through theology, which we looked at in previous images, how the beauty of the images in the story of the Wolf of Gubbio are expressed through the arts. Scotus, the beauty, art as a form of goodness of God, how Francis saw the goodness, the beauty in everything, and in this case, the Wolf of Gubbio. The beauty manifested in the Franciscan tradition, pax et bonum, peace and all, good to all. Francis and Claire saw the beauty within all of God's creation. You are who you, what you are in the eyes of God. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And as one song is, everything is beautiful in its own way. People of heart in a culture of violence, a quote from Richard War. When the scriptures speak of the human person, the words used are spirit, soul, and body. This is the person who loves. 
when our bodies, souls, and spirits are in balance, we are then biblical persons of the heart, spirituality of the heart, the balance of mind, body, soul, and spirit. The privilege versus sensitivity, nonviolent language, how we talk with each other. Do we talk with as opposed to at? How we address each other. Do we call each other by our first name instead of pronouns? How we use gestures with each other. Do we point or have, or have a hand, open hand motion? Arms folded? our arms, hands open to receive? Is our desk between people or a chair to the side to welcome people? When do works of charity become works of justice? This is a symbol that was used in the Fall River, Massachusetts in the Office of AIDS Ministry. Can we be redemptive people, redemptive people? Jesus came that we may have life and have it to the full. This is from John. His presence and love in each of our lives brings us to wholeness. He came to heal the wounds, the brokenhearted, and to bind up all our wounds being graced with his presence and we become spirit filled and alive and can rejoice in his love for us. A love which continually recreates and brings new life and renewed hope. We have been rede redeemed and therefore we become redemptive people knowing we are loved and able to love in return. Journey to justice, Franciscans say, close the school of the Americas. So for years, many Franciscans joined with others in, turn, in terms of closing those schools of the Americas. And the power of the will, this is, uh, taken again from the writings of uh, Josef Reichel and Andre Serino. Through our use of the power of the will in three main functions, we reflect the image of God who is the highest good. So we start with the will and deliberation, judgment, desire, and highest good. So the power of the will taken from John Scotus. And this is also in the book uh, written by Josef Reichel on the Assisi during World War II. Three heroes of Assisi <coughs> in World War II, Bishop Giuseppe, Colonel Mueller and Don Aldo. Presence in our pluralistic society strength of the will and during the time of Assisi the bishop bishop and Don Aldo were risking their lives uh, with Jewish refugees that they kept hidden Colonel Mueller was also an MD so Assisi at the time in World War II was a medical hospital safe setting. And um, 
Bishop Mueller had daily mass with Colonel Mueller would have daily mass with the bishop and Don Aldo. So you might say that um, he probably sensed there was something going on, but even Don Aldo and the bishop had to also keep it within silence of the other Franciscans, because you must remember that many of the Franciscan communities were German, original roots. And so it was the poor clairs from France that were in Assisi that they used as one of the houses uh, to hide the people. So during the day, the, they would dress up the refugees in clothing, in um, habits. So they could, it looked like they were praying in the courtyard when, just to give them some light and some air. And also when we were on a pilgrimage, Don Aldo at the time he was still alive, showed us where they would bury in the crypt, the suitcases <laughs> uh, of the refugees and cement them in the wall uh, so they would be hidden from anyone. But uh, everyone thinks that the Franciscans were the ones that saved the people of the uh, Jews at the time. It wasn't the Franciscans. It was the Bishop and Don Aldo. And it's said that within this book, um, that when a peace, when the truce was called the end of the war and the soldiers, the German soldiers were leaving Assisi, it is believed that Colonel Mueller had his gun ready to go of anyone who pillaged or um, ransacked any parts of Assisi to take with them. Uh, as we know right now what's going on in the Ukraine, how villages and cities are just being demolished and to think of this um, situation that um, in Assisi, how a German soldier of superiority uh, colonel took the responsibility to make sure that none of the German shoulders did any harm to the people or their property when leaving. And just uh, as a small note, Joseph Reichel, who's a secular Franciscan, is married to Colonel Mueller's daughter. Uh, so granddaughter. Uh, so again, it's very interesting within the Franciscan family, what, how this relationship came out of something 50 years after. If you want peace, work for justice. Again, this is a symbol of the uh, peace dub and the olive leaf um, that is used so much. And the Franciscans International have a vision statement. Uh, we are Franciscan men and women who follow followers of St. Francis. We believe that all creation from the smallest organism to human beings is in interdependent relationship with our planet. We are aware that this relationship is threatened by a refusal to admit this interdependence by exploitation and domination. We commit ourselves to encourage awareness of this interdependence so that all creation may live in harmony. We, we will do this by service to our own members and to the United Nations personal personnel as well as our non-government organizations through collaboration, education, and action regarding care of creation, peacemaking, 
concerns for the poor. We see these concerns as congruent with the goals expressed by the United Nations in the Charter and its Declaration of Human Rights. Again, we use this symbol, uh, women, women of vision, Mary on the way, uh, Franciscan heart of peace. We know that Mary is our center for the Franciscan family. It is Mary that we pray to and we use as part of our devotional prayers, um, knowing how Francis also and Claire uh, would always turn to Mary for that guidance. So here's a modern version of Mary on the way. Again, this is by a Franciscan missionary of Mary artist. Francis and the Wolf, Ogubio, Pax et Bonum, peacemaking and all good to all. Again, as we look at this uh, unit, is that symbol of Francis and the respect for the wolf and the wolf respect for Francis. Peace and all goodness. And then in the, again, going back to uh, the symbolism and within Bonaventure of three. So we have three different representations, a pox and bonum by three different artists. Peace and justice and integrity of creation for all, pox and bonum that symbol of peace represented by Mary Esther Stewart. And in our discussion today, we look at St. Francis and St. Clair created an alternative lifestyle, which many followed and was an impact on the merciless social structure of their day. What alternative lifestyle can we offer in our generation? Today, are we a culture without compassion? What is your understanding for social justice basis of all Franciscan life and mission? And how does it inspire you? Within the writings, as we said, we're based, Francis is based in scripture. So from Matthew, but Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. How does Jesus handle power? How does Jesus deal with claims of leadership? How can we put this text into practice? Look at being specific in terms of how you can incorporate this. Francis taught the melody to his companions so that they could sing the song to the people. Some time later, however, a serious scandal arose in Assisi. The bishop had excommunicated the mayor and the mayor forbade the people from having any kind of transaction with the bishop. Francis was quite concerned because the peace of the city had been severely disturbed. So he added a verse to his new song. And the, Canticle of Creatures. And this is the only part that relates to human beings within the beautiful canticle. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are they who endure in peace, for by you, most high, shall they be crowned. Next, Francis set up a meeting between the belligerent parties and arranged for one of his brothers 
to sing the entire canticle to them. Both the mayor and the bishop were moved to tears, asked each other's forgiveness and embraced. So how does Francis handle power? How does Francis deal with claims of leadership? How can you put this text into practice? What are the similarities and the differences for Christ and Francis to handle peacemaking? This brings us to the end of session four, reviewing units eight, nine, and 10 that have included Perspective of presence and dialogue living in diversity in a pluralistic society, Franciscan peacemaking and enculturation through a Franciscan perspective.